Turned it on, now, I think. Can you tell? You know, Shane is the preacher anyway, so that's that's how we know that she's good because she's back here. Second time. to get my baggage today. <laughs> I got it. I'm good. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. And my mom surprised me by showing up. I was not expecting that. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to still see over this. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure always. I love spending time with my husband's side of the family because they're crazy. They're crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there, there is always laughter. So um, I mentioned that last time. They were a lot of fun. And I'm glad uh, my family's here. So thank you. So um, this is Mother's Day. This is not just for mothers, though, I promise. Um, but I got to mention a little bit of bomb stuff since it is Mother's Day. And, um, if you have a child that you have potty trained, then you automatically qualify for Mothers of the Year right there because I was sure mine were going to be in pull-ups in high school, and thankfully that's not going to happen. <laughs> but uh, it certainly feels like that would be the case. So, um, Okay, so being a mom, question number 2,345 is my first Lighten your load is what we're going to talk about today. Lighten your load. So um, being a mom is the best thing ever, but also the hardest. And one of the reasons is you get asked so many questions all day long. And um, I hate making decisions. I don't like asking questions. So usually by the end of the day or maybe even by noon, sometimes I have to say, stop. I don't know. No more questions. I can't handle any more questions. Um, we just went for vacation. I think somebody had mentioned that last week. And we got... We went to an ice cream place with rolled ice cream, which <laughs> my youngest does not like. Um, but there were like 40 topping options there. That's just stress in writing. Like you don't need all these options. You just want chocolate, you know? So again, um, way too many options, all these questions. But sometimes things are like that through our daily life, right? We have lots of things put on us, lots of options. Um, sometimes... You, um, just a second. <laughs> you're unsure what to do, you don't know where to go next, um, what decision needs to be made, or sometimes you know something needs to happen, but you don't know how to fix it, or sometimes it's out of your control and you're not able to fix it. Or your basic 
fear, worry, anxiety, you know, these things, if you listen to the news for about 23 seconds, you can pick up most of those pretty easily. So all of these things um, in forms of baggage that we pick up and we carry and we take throughout our day. So talking to God and trusting in him is a way to lighten your load. And it gives you permission to rely on someone other than yourself. So um, permission granted. You don't have to fix everything. You don't have to do everything perfectly. You can take it to God and rely on him and let him help you and let him lighten your load. Um, He is capable. He is strong enough. He can do that. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 6 and 8 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. So maybe that's part of the problem. Um, Humility is kind of like key one there. Um, So anyway, you need some humility there. But um, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Um, He does really care for you. So um, Christianity 101 is like the resurrection, right? Death, burial, resurrection. So the idea that someone would go through the suffering of the cross and um, get buried and then on their own have the ability to raise again is pretty extreme. It's kind of out there. It's big. But that's the basic, that's Christianity 101. That's like the basic thought. So if you're here, then you believe that. So if you believe that big thing, then you have to believe all of it, right? So if you believe this, then all of it works. It's all good. It all works. So the whole word of God works because you can, you base it on something like that. It, it's all going to be good. My pastor had pointed that out a while ago, and I thought it was pretty fascinating that we think we can believe that big thing, but then expect that God can't take care of, you know, a little thing that I go through or a big thing, you know, that you go through, but he's able to help with that because it's all good. It all works. There was a slogan back in the nineties. I'm pretty sure I had it on a t-shirt that was let go like God. That was like a big thing back in the day, but it works. It really does. Um, if you just, yeah, let go, let God. So Psalm 23, um, we're going to read through this. It's so calming and peaceful. Is that there? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Oh, so nice. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Wait a minute. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) When did I take over? Right? When did I start walking on my own? Because we had a really good thing going right? There were still waters and calm and pretty and green pastures, all this nice stuff. So why would we mess this up, right? Why do I do this? When he leads, it's all this good stuff. When I take over, it ends up being yucky, right? So we continue. Even though I sometimes make bad decisions and take over, right? I will still feel no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So bad things still can hang around, but he's with us. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So when he leads, it's green pastures and still waters. When I lead, it's valleys and shadows of death. So um, here are some cliches. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, but the best day with him is better than the worst day without him. Without fail, he wins every time. So it's always better to have him than not have him. So even if there's a bad thing, have him. So in review, uh, cue creepy slide. (laughs) This would be valleys and shadows of death. That is what I think of when I think of valleys and shadows of death. So that's bad. That's yuck, right? We do not want that. When we think of, um, but when we give it to God and let him lead, cue pretty slide, yeah, we get provision, green pastures, still waters, restoration, comfort, anointing, blessing, goodness, and mercy. So there's really not much to think about when you weigh the options of when he leads or when you lead. 
and do your own thing. So you can hang on to the, the baggage, the worry and mistrust and fear, and take it all on yourself. Or you can give yourself permission to rely on someone else. You can trust him and enjoy the blessings and benefits that come with that. Um, you can tell him your concerns and your fears and let him lighten your load. That's it. I thought it was going to be longer this time. <laughs> we'll just leave that there. <laughs> So this is my conclusion. It's my first Mother's Day without my mom. But I remember things when we would go to church, my brother and I, I'm like, you better start talking in tongues because we're going to meet Jesus like right now. <laughs> that verse that says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If I was the psalmist, I would never say, my dad's belt comforts me. In fact, it does quite the opposite. <laughs> but the Lord sometimes needs to refocus our direction. Right. right? And sometimes it's going, you know, everything was good and well, like she said this morning, and then we take over. And we start going down our path. Who knows that when you take your own path, it ends bad. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and the Lord needs to bring you back into alignment. And so that moment of pain where the Lord chastises you, where the Lord kind of takes you to the woodshed and reminds you that, hey, my way is easy. My burden is light. My yoke is light. And the Lord, and we're like, why does it seem like the Lord is using his rod and his staff on me? Because sometimes we need to be reminded that the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the Lord is easy. And so when it seems like God just is going, you know, would, would, you, would you cut me a break, God? You ever prayed that? God, just cut me a break. Just cut me some slack. He's trying to make our burdens light. And we pile stuff on ourselves and pile stuff on ourselves and pile stuff on ourselves. This is an unseasoned traveler right here. You can't go for a week with one bag. And the Lord is trying to make our load light. I thank God that I grew up with a mom who loved me enough to do that Amen. and to use that wooden spoon for more than they could carry. <laughs> I'm thankful for a heavenly father who will correct me and bring me into his wisdom and into his path. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Let's stand this morning. I told you I wasn't going to preach. I could, but I wasn't going to. I was, I, was, I was standing right on the edge, wasn't I? <laughs> the sweet people of our church, oh, I can see where he's heading. He's not going to stop. Um, hey, if you've still got your mom, you need to tell her happy Mother's Day. Tell her you love her. That's right. and, if, and if you're like me and your mom is no longer with us, Tell Sister Man that you love her.
because, or tell Sister Charity that you love her. I am thankful for strong, godly women who have been mother figures in my life, who have watched over me, and who have had, well, those of you who know Sister Monk, Sister, Sister Monk is not the type, there are times I've gone to her and wanted a hug, and I did not get a hug. Yeah, I did. I wanted a pat on the back, and she thought I needed attention just a little bit lower. <laughs> and I'm thankful for strong, godly women who are not afraid to go, Donnie, there's something in your life that needs fixed, and the Lord has spoken to me. Don't, don't, if somebody is going to speak in your life, know that that person has spent time on their knees praying for you. And asking God to do a work in your life. I'm thankful for those people. I'm thankful for all of you that are here. Thank you for ministering to us this morning. And you did go longer than last time. You did, yes. So, <laughs> My, Michael's back there with a the stopwatch. Knock it off. No, Brother Marsh is in Japan. The second longest one is here. Um, and we're going to pray and ask God to be with us today. <laughs> and bless our mind. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you this morning. We thank you for the word of God today. We thank you that you've moved in our hearts and touched our spirits this morning. We thank you for all the godly moms who's uh, spoken to our lives and influenced us for you. Lord, I pray right now that you'd bless every mom in this place. Lord, let your hand of protection be on them. I thank you. Let their cup overflow with blessing. Lord, we love you today and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. It wouldn't be church if I didn't say I love every one of you. And there is isn't What? And Kathy, who's not here, said to tell everyone happy Mother's Day. She, she, you interrupted my tagline. Here I go. We're going to do it again. I love every one of you. Still, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Uh, say hi to somebody you don't know, and uh, do something nice for your mom today. God bless you.